The Giants, worse than I thought. Way worse than I thought. I, I thought we were going to see something. But, you know, what makes this even worse is, you know, who the offense coordinator for the Denver Broncos Oh, is. yeah, Pat Shermer. That's right. And then uh, for the Jets, better than I thought. Much better than I thought, especially the second half. And there's no question in my mind watching Zach Wilson. He can play. He can play at this level. He's got the arm strength. Uh, he got beat up yesterday in the first half, and he came back and he played well in the second half. So there's a silver lining for the Jets. There's no question about it. And uh, I, I would also say that they looked like a real football team yesterday, uh, albeit Sam Darnold had the best first half of his career against them, which we figured was going to happen. It was going to be like one of those bounce-back games and revenge games. And I'm still not totally sold on him yesterday either because, you know, there were a couple times he had guys wide open and sailed the ball right over their heads. And uh, that was one of the problems that he had here. But, yeah, there's no question about it. The Giants basically, and they know it. They know it. They got their ass kicked. And we're going to find out pretty quickly because they play Thursday night now against Washington what they're going to look like after five games of you know of the start at the begin at the beginning of the season so and we asked Joe Judge you know you got to get ready for this you got to flush this performance yesterday you know he can't be too hard I, I hate to say this because I know it, it just sounds weird but he can't be too hard on that team because he can lose that team if that team continues to play this well oh, really and you, if, you think and if he's grinding if he's grinding and it's going to be you know, the Joe Judge that, you know, came from Belichick and all that other stuff. He's just got to be careful. That's all I'm saying. I feel like last careful. year they responded to that. I, I, but last year was a different deal. You know, there was all the COVID stuff. They weren't around him. They did not, they didn't have OTAs. They didn't had a modified training camp. They didn't have any preseason games. You know, now all of a sudden they're with him constantly every single day. And they've been with him uh, every single day. Uh, the other silver lining that I will say. Daniel Jones made some unbelievable throws. There were guys that were draped all over his wide receivers. And he made some really good throws. And Kenny Galladay made some really good catches. Yeah, it was encouraging. Right, so so that part of it is a little bit encouraging. But overall, the overall general feeling, and I had friends that went to that game yesterday. They were looking so forward to going back to, to MetLife Stadium to see their Giants and everything else that just basically were like, you got to be kidding me. I cannot believe this is what we just – what we just saw. This was, this has been part and parcel to the last four or five years. It, yeah. it looks the same, and there's no energy. And Daniel Jones is not a guy that brings energy. You know, he's not an energy guy. He doesn't. There are a couple of times, you know, and he goes to run with the ball. And this is the this is the this is the play that changed the entire game. The, the Giants were getting beat up pretty good, and Daniel Jones runs with the ball, and he goes to double up and cover it with two hands because he knows. He doesn't want to fumble. It was like when Tiki Barber used to fumble early on in the Giants. Of course, Tom Coughlin changed it high and tight. High and tight, and he, and he did a good job. And yeah. he recognized that he had a problem, and he did something about it. And I saw Daniel Jones running with the ball. He went to put two arms around it to protect it, and the ball just gets knocked out. And right there, the game was already in favor of Denver, but if there was going to be any momentum shift, in that game at all was going to be that series. Which was very familiar and dredges up a lot of these old feelings that Giants fans have about Daniel Jones and gives all the doubters of him all the fuel they need. Yeah, so I'm sitting there with Phil yesterday. Of course, we're watching the game, and Phil says, oh, it's all, all, all the, whole, the whole narrative now is going to be about that fumble. And I said, well, you know, there's a lot of things that I saw out of Daniel Jones that I kind of liked yesterday, and I know nobody really wants to hear that because the team looked like crap and they looked flat and they, and they got beat. They just got beat. They just got their asses kicked. And Teddy Bridgewater made about four or five plays that, like, you don't draw up in the playbook. You know, he got away from guys and made plays. Yeah, that one to Hamlin that he actually caught, not the one that he dropped in the end zone. Yeah. Where he's bouncing, Teddy Bridgewater's bouncing off of guys, everything, he's running around and throws the ball yeah, up, and that, Hamlin goes that, up and that, gets it. That's not yeah. a play in the playbook. That's, right. that's just Teddy Bridgewater making plays. I have to say, for a number of quarterbacks that have moved – and gone on to play somewhere else, whether it be Jameis Winston, Sam Darnold, or Teddy Bridgewater, or Matthew Stafford last night, what you saw is you saw guys in, you know, new place, new surroundings, different players around them, and, you know, and you, and you realize just how good some of these players are that are around these new quarterbacks in these new spots, including one, Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> Oh, yeah, of course. Who oh we, uh, we? I think everybody knew how good he was. It's not like we forgot. We just knew that he was hurt last year. Uh, so the Giants, if you look at the schedule, this Thursday night game, then followed up by the Atlanta Falcons, who looked terrible yesterday against the Philadelphia Eagles. Hey, come out of this 2-1, and one, 
get this thing righted and then we'll forget about this. But if you end up losing to a division foe in the re- in the Washington football team on Thursday and you're sitting there 0 and 2 going into that Falcon game, I mean this thing feels like it could slip away really quickly because you got the Saints, the Cowboys and Rams right after that. And you know, the amazing thing is is that Washington loses Ryan Fitzpatrick in the first quarter yesterday. Mm-hmm. So uh, Heineke goes in there, and Heineke is a much more mobile quarterback than Ryan Fitzpatrick is. And Heineke makes plays. Kind of like Teddy Bridgewater made plays yesterday. And I, I don't – it's not like you're facing a top five quarterback. You're not, but you're facing a young kid that showed something yet last year in the playoffs. That's why they kept him. And now he actually showed it again yesterday. He, he did infuse some energy – uh, for the Washington offense, but uh, you know, a couple teams had great wins, and, and the Charger win yesterday for Brandon Staley, his first day out on the road against that defense. Even though uh, you know Justin Herbert played well, uh, it, it was not a great game, but they won the game, and they got on the plane and they flew all the way back to LA, knowing that they won their first game against you know a tough team, and you just never know what you're going to see that first weekend the Denver Broncos can say the same thing. They and a lot of a lot of road teams won yesterday. Yeah, you know, it is interesting that you said that Joe Judge could lose this team if things start going rough these first couple of weeks and maybe his personality. And by the way, he's got to know the rules. This is a guy who is a buttoned up, under Saban, under Belichick, special he teams guy who loses a timeout in the second half because he challenges a play that was already reviewed because it was a scoring play. you got to know better than that. I mean, that's an obvious one. Uh, but anyway, I, this this thing could could get, and, and I, I've been on the Giants and I still will remain on the Giants. I want to see how they play Thursday night. But could get really ugly really quick because of the way the schedule is set up. And I know that we've joked around about the make-or-break year stuff and all of that. But there is a ton of pressure, not only on Daniel Jones, but the front yeah. office. Yes. I mean, this this is it. When Dave Gettleman did the gold jacket stuff with Saquon Barkley, when he said, you know, we love Daniel Jones and the fan base couldn't stand it. He got booed before he played a game, which we didn't like. But all of that stuff that, that that nobody really was appreciating at the time that we're a Giant fan looking at those Dave Gettleman picks, like that could come to roost really, really quickly this year because all this padding that is that they have had of, oh, give them another year or a new coach or Daniel Jones or maybe, like all that stuff's over. Like the, the excuses, the time, it is all up. So I'm a little surprised that, and I know Phil comes from a giant quarterback perspective. He wants to protect the Giants quarterback, and Daniel's a great kid. And, and Phil hates the make-or-break stuff. He hates the narrative about the fumble. But that's reality. It is I'm reality. sorry, it's I know, reality. I know, I know, I, we all know that. But, and you know, this is where you find out what kind of guy Daniel Jones is because it's going to be a lot of that. And I Joe mean, jo- an average quarterback who's probably going to be out of a job if he keeps playing like that. Well, you know... <laughs> You know, you say average quarterback. Well, Teddy Bridgewater was an average quarterback at one time. Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater made a Pro Bowl, though. It, I know, but, it, but he's been bouncing around. Went to around, the playoffs. Been and bouncing around and all this other stuff. Had a major stuff. injury. I, 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 but I'm, I'm just saying, there's, there's, there's always a chance for a reclamation project. You just never know where it's going to happen and when it's going to happen. I'm not, yeah. And I'm not saying that that is Daniel Jones after one game, because there were throws that he made. Uh, you know, the, like I, we said this last week. I, we both picked the Giants. Yep. Okay, because we really felt like the Giants were going to take the next step. But we also said that this Denver defense is damn good. Damn good. I don't think we any of us expected Teddy Bridgewater to play as well as he did. No. And make some of the throws that he made. He made some great throws yesterday. But now saying all of that, and I know the fumble is included with Daniel Jones. Man, he made some great throws yesterday, too. He, he I'm telling you. There were times where Galladay and Slayton and these guys were covered like gloves. I mean, guys right on them. And you talk about having to throw a ball into a tight spot so only your guy could get it. He made probably a half a dozen of those throws yesterday. Well, what about the defense, though, with the Giants when you're talking about overall? I mean, third down conversions, fourth well, down conversions. that's the kill. They have to get off the field. That's I mean, the thing. I mean, God. This was frustrating as all hell. And you didn't expect the Giant defense to be that. No. You, you, you thought that they would be one of the reasons why the Giants would have won. And it all works together. We, you know, we all look, it all works together. And it, and it was about as bad an opening day that you could have asked for for Joe Judge and the Giants. There's no question about it. I'm, but I'm not, like, it, again, it's, it's week one. 
there are a lot of teams that looked like crap yesterday, including the Green Bay Packers. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers. But they have a history of success. This is the problem. Like, and everybody will say it's week one, it's week one, it's week one. But if you don't have a reference point to where the team was good or the quarterback was great, then what do you have? Like, you could tell me it's week one flush the game when it's Aaron Rodgers. That team was the one seed last year, and he won the MVP. Daniel Jones gave us yesterday what he's always given us. But the defense also gave you something that you didn't expect. It's not all Daniel Jones. Which is even more alarming, though. Daniel Jones fumbled, yes. But Daniel Jones made some great throws. But I, I was surprised by the defense not being able to get off the field more so than I was about the the lethargic offensive performance. But Kenny Galladay showed you why they paid him the yeah, money. Yeah, no, of course. We, we all love that signing. But what, like, So is Saquon Barkley completely healthy? Because if he's completely healthy, then you got to use him more than how you used him yesterday. I mean, to me, well, I just... that comes back to the whole Jason Garrett offensive stuff and whether or not, you know, how, how uh, creative is he? Is he helping his young quarterback? Is he helping his young running back get back into the flow of things? But you know how, I like, when I see... Christian McCaffrey doing the things that he's doing. You know, that I would try to emulate whatever Carolina and Joe Brady are doing on offense to try to create Saquon Barkley in that mold of a player. But I don't think he thinks of himself as that mold of a player, although he can catch the ball out of the backfield. But, you know, like Christian McCaffrey's touching the ball, it seems like, every other every other snap. Sure, yeah. That 22 is running all over the place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that kid is unbelievable. Yeah, It's kind of like Dalvin Cook for Minnesota. I know your team lost yesterday. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like that kind of player, and that's the way that Saquon Barkley should be deployed, the way that those guys are. Or at least try to get the ball into Saquon Barkley's hand as you, oh, as you hear, you know, all the talking heads, and that's what we are in the space so he can use his abilities to break away from people yeah. and get away from people. I, you know, I don't, you know, D- Denver's defense is good. We all know they're good, especially when all those guys are healthy and Bond Miller's doing what Bond Miller does. So it's, it's, um, it was, it was a wake up. I think it's a wake up call for the giants. There is no question that that team goes back to work today. They have a very short week. That's the only good thing that they got going for them because Otherwise, we'd be hearing about this all week. And before you know it, they'll be on the train or the plane on their way down to Washington getting ready to play Thursday night. And it's probably the best remedy to get all this crap out of your system is to go down there and beat the Washington football team. And the, I guess the biggest point that came out of this Jet game that I've heard everybody say that it's hard to disagree with is the fact that Zach Wilson got completely just waylaid in that I, first I, half, I, and then in the second half, came out and looked like he learned some things, dusted himself off, made some throws, didn't quit, looked like he was someone that it wasn't the moment wasn't too big for him, even though he was on his back for most of the game. All great stuff. I, All great that, stuff. That 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 I think is a point that is hard hard to argue. But but there he gets he gets earholed from the right hand side with a blitz that he never even sees and his back is in the flat. If he sees the blitz and reads the blitz the way he's supposed to, he would have just dropped it off to that guy and he would have been running down the sideline. Yeah. But instead he gets ear hold because he doesn't see it. And why doesn't he see it? Because he's never seen it before. Because he's a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> and things are happening. It's like well, they, he, I, he no, gets he, those excuses though this year. Right. He, you does, know, that's, he, does, that's, he does. He does. But the point being is like I think you said it. He comes back in the second half and plays a lot better. Yeah, he had his sleeve ripped and he was on the sidelines. He looked like he had aged twenty years. <laughs> I just I laugh because I went through it, so yeah. I know what it's like. Uh, but you know, he, uh, Trevor Lawrence, you know, these guys struggled a little bit. And even Mac Mac Jones looked good. They didn't lose the game because of Mac Jones mm-hmm. up in New England. They lost the game because they turnovers and penalties. I mean, Mac Jones looked like he knew what the hell he was doing. There were a couple of times he, you know, made a little got a little flustered, but that's all expected, you know. And and you think about teams that won yesterday. I would say that New Orleans shocked themselves, especially with Jameis Winston. Jameis, you know, I, yeah, but he only LASIK. Took, I told you, he, 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 LASIK he, surgery. He threw like nineteen passes. Hey, blowout, LASIK, <laughs> LASIK Jameis. But then Tua, Tua winning up in uh, in Miami, although you know he had a very shaky game through that late bad interception that could have cost them the game. And if New England doesn't fumble, they're probably going to lose. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was an unbelievable day yesterday. And the Brown-Kansas City game 
was absolutely everything as advertised. Oh, of course. That that Kansas City defense, though, and I understand the Browns offense is very, very good, but you could already see sort of the cracks in the roster construction. Just remember, Tyron Matthew did not play. Okay, but still, I mean, even a little bit of this we saw last year. When you end up paying a lot of guys on offense and you're hoping that that offense is so dominant that the defense is sort of needs to just be okay, the bend but don't break, that's a very dangerous place to be in the NFL. So watching that Kansas City game, I know we're going to take a break. Watching that Kansas City game, what I took out of it. Now, Patrick Mahomes is great, and he's great when he's running around making plays. I saw 95% of the game yesterday, Patrick Mahomes hitting his back foot and throwing it and getting rid of it. And that tells me that's what he worked on in the offseason, that he didn't really want to play backyard football as much as he did or he had to do in the Super Bowl. He didn't want to run all over the place. Well, especially with that Browns pass rush with Clowney right. and Garrett. Right. And at, at the quickness at which he gets the ball out. And, like, I don't know uh, I don't know why more teams don't run plays like this, but Travis Kelsey goes up five yards, turn around, the ball's right on him, and he's in the end zone. It's like – why can't everybody else do that? <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard to do that play yeah. and, and steal that play. I don't, I don't understand. Well, because there's a million other guys in an offense you're going to worry about, <laughs> too. That's why. But it's, yeah. it's crazy how fast he drops back and how fast the ball comes out. Now, he's got some of the fastest guys on the field, meaning that they get to their spots a little bit quicker than most players would get to their spots on other teams. But, man, I'll tell you, when he is in rhythm like that and he is hitting his back foot and letting it rip, they're virtually impossible to stop. They're virtually impossible to stop. And the Tyree kill, no. he, he is shot out of like a pinball machine. Yeah, he has is, he is not lost a step yet, that's for sure. That's true. As fast as ever. All right, Boomer and Geo on the fan in CBS Sports Network. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.